How do I mesh this passive speaker with this power amplifier? Best audio performance from the passive loud speaker and the power amplifier matching. Should I use RMS power, program power, or peak power for my power amplifier to match my passive loud speaker? I will tell you my answer right away. I will use a power amplifier with a power rating four times of the RMS power or AES power of the passive loud speaker. So stick around and I shall explain to you the reason why I use this kind of matching between the passive loud speaker and the power amplifier. The very first thing you need to learn is to understand the power rating of the loudspeakers. So for example, we have rated power here, program power here, peak power here. So others power that you might heard before, music power, RMS power, continuous power. I will not explain to you what is RMS power, peak power, program power, music power. So you can easily find all this information from Google. So, but I would like to highlight to you two common failures in passive loudspeaker. So one of them is a thermal overload, which actually causes the woofer or the transducer to burn. And then the second one, and the second failure normally, the cone will break, so, which we call it a mechanical failure. Now I have this very useful information from PowerSoft that might help you to understand more on the power and the limiter. So I will share this link if you're interested to read the whole thing, but I just want to highlight some of the important stuff to you. Basically, this uh, document share to you that there is two type of limiter available. One is the peak limiter and one is the RMS limiter. So basically, the peak limiter is for protection against mechanical damages which actually is the maximum displacement of the cone, the X-Max. For RMS limiter, this is to protect the speakers from thermal damage because when you have the woofer keep on moving, so over the time, because of the friction between the coin and the A, it will build up the thermal temperature. So in summary, from this documentation by PowerSoft, they are suggesting two types of limiter which means the matching between the power amplifier must have enough power to provide the peak power for the loudspeaker system. Here I have another interesting documentation to share with you and this is from Nexo. So this is a user manual for GeoD. So you can find yourself in the Google or I can share the link below. So basically this is the something interesting to learn about. So basically, Nexo recommend high power amplifier in all cases. So the only reason why to select lower power amplifier is due to budget constraint. So because a lower power amplifier will not reduce chances of driver damage due to over excursion. So because the power is so low, it will never reach the maximum excursion, which causes the mechanical damage. But because of sustained clipping, it will increase the risk of thermal damage. So this is another interesting statement. So if an incident occurs on an installation without protections, so this is referring a high power amplifier, but there's no uh, limiter at all. So the fact that amplifiers only generating half of their rated power minus 3 dB will be used, will not change anything in respect of the possible damage. Yeah, this is actually practically uh, correct because let's say for a power amplifier of 1000 watt because we are not driving it 100% uh, constantly so it will not be giving us a 1000 watt constantly so because we are playing music so, so music is something that is variable you go up you go down the tone will up the tone will down so basically we are working maybe it's about according to nexo it's about 6 or 10 dB lower than the amplifier rating. So which means this is about, I mean, how many times? It's about 3 to 4 times lower than the power. Of course, not everyone is using the peak power as the recommended power for their power amplifier. So for example, the L acoustic in this documentation is recommending the 2 times of the RMS power as the recommended power. So you can see from here, for example, this SB218 is a RMS power 1100 watt. 
and the recommended power is 2200 watt and the proper limiter is set based on this recommended power and then they also recommend to set the proper limiter to the RMS power. So which actually they are using 1100 as their limiter setting. The reason I choose peak power for my power amplifier is to ensure that my power amplifier able to give enough power for the transient response or the impact response. Therefore, any impact, my system have sufficient power for that. There you have it. Normally, I will choose the peak power of the passive flux speaker as my power M rating. And normally, the peak power is four times of the RMS power. And this is how I mesh my power amplifier with the passive loudspeaker at the DSP so that I can set the proper limiter so that the system can run optimally. That is all for today. See you again and bye-bye.